Hey everyone, Ryan Bolton here. I'm a local mortgage expert and with me as always is Carson Jones. He's with Team Honey, part of the Realty One Group Goldmark here in St. George. And today we wanna to do a recap of the good, the bad and the ugly of 2022 in the real estate market. We've got some great numbers to share with you. So Carson, let's just jump right in. Yeah. How did 2022 look and how did it work out? Boy, it was definitely, I, I would say volatile is the, uh, is the word of the year. It seems <laughs> like it, it, we started off in, in a position where everybody felt like biggest seller, literally probably one of the biggest sellers markets ever. Um, I mean, we were getting 30 plus offers on many, many, many of these listings that we were getting. And now all of a sudden come the end of the year, we're at a place where sometimes it can be hard to get one offer a month on some of these homes, depending on, uh, on where it's listed. With that said, that doesn't mean that we're suddenly in this huge buyer's market. Homes are still selling. Uh, we're, we're seeing very few offers on homes that are still well overpriced and are kind of taking themselves out of the market there. But the houses that are reasonably priced, we're still getting, I mean, at least four to five offers for the most part, pretty quickly on some of these houses. So, I mean, of course, our biggest recommendation is going to be price your home correctly. Because if you price it correctly, there's still no reason that you can't sell even over asking price in the at the end of 2022 here yeah. and going into 2023. So uh, that's, that's a big takeaway I have for people is it's real estate still local. You know, the news, all the headlines, all that type of stuff are, are trying to find the ways to get clicks, get likes. It's not re local. And St. George still is growing and yeah. expanding at an incredible rate. Not and, and it was a good thing for it to slow down. Everybody was all scared and waiting for some sort of crash when really that's what we want is a slower correction, not it this is. massive correction. And that's what we're really going to see in our numbers. We're going to see, like you said, just too hyper inflated, too going too crazy for 2021 and most of 2022. So the slowdown is what we need. And that's what this whole thing is trying to do is make sure it doesn't turn into a crash. It is. It is. And we're luckily in a, in a point right now where things are starting to get a little bit more doable for the foreseeable foreseeable future for a lot of these buyers. A lot of the buyers were very hesitant to do anything over these past few months. Mm. And now it seems like we're very much in a place where buyers are starting to come out of their shell a little bit. Interest rates have gone down at times. They kind of keep going up, down, up, down a little bit here, but buyers are starting to get a little bit more open to buying. And I definitely think here at the beginning of the year, we're going to see a, a decent swarm of buyers coming in quick because you always get that big group of people says, oh, we'll do it after the holidays. And so I think that'll be sign more significant this year than it has been in the past. I agree. So, I agree. So let's review some of the numbers. What yeah. are some of the sales numbers for 2022 in Washington County specifically? So that's a good question. So let's just start with, uh, let, let's start with pretty much January of 2021, pretty much right at a year ago now. So okay. In January 2021, active listings was 553 in Washington County. And this is residential listings, not including um, commercial land lots. So residential listings, we had 553 January of 2022. Okay. Sold, we had 391. Hmm. Okay. So we'll put those up on the screen. Now, what were interest rates in early January, 2020. Yeah, I was pulling up the average interest rates for that time. So this is including a bunch of different loan programs. Some people got better rates and worse, but this is taking an average. So the first of the month, we were about 3.35%. Okay. By the end of that month, we'd already moved almost to four. 3.74% was the average rate. So that's when we started seeing that steady incline, yeah. uh, increase of interest rates. And a lot of that was the Fed raising interest rates with concerns of inflation. There was also, they were artificially lower than what they should have been during mm -hmm. the pandemic. So that's just kind of an echo of that. So yeah, that's when we just started seeing that interest rate start to rise. Okay. But okay. we were 3.3 to start the year. By the end of January, we were about 3.7. So so that that's good to know. Good to know. We're kind of in the mid threes mm -hmm. uh, in January. So mm -hmm. then let's, let's take it to kind of April and May. April and May is when things began to shift. Mm -hmm. And um, so active listings, if we look at, act, at the active listings, we're at 682. So 682 in April and then in... Uh, uh, in January, we said we were 553. Yep. So it is a jump, but not huge. I yeah, mean, only 130, 130 more okay. than, than we had. So it's beginning to go up. If we look at, at March, actually, there were only about 20 more in March than there were in January. So from March to April, it went up a decent amount there. Now, How about from, solds for that month? So solds in, in April was 483. Hmm. So 483 in April, yet January was 391. So yes, we had more listings, but we also had more sales. So that that worked, to, that worked together. So April was 
probably the peak, the 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 highest the highest point there. We had the most sales altogether March and April there of 2022, and then and that's pretty of normal. That's kind of one of our harder hard, uh, hotter points. You have the parade in February, and that's kind of when the the market's shifting. People are done with snow, and they still have snow and that yeah. kind of thing. So that you usually see a little spike in St. George during that time every year, anyway. And and, and May is when things kind of started to 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 change there. So what mm-hmm. was the interest rate? it kind of seems like March, April, May, that's where things began to shift. So I'm looking at this chart here, March one, we were 3.9 by the end of March, we were almost five. Yeah. That was a pretty significant rise there. And a lot of that was again, the fed was talking about doing a lot of interest rate hikes through this year, which they have done. Right. A lot of that was baking that in. It was already anticipating what was going to happen. I mean, last thing you want to do as a, as an economist or anything like that is wait till the thing actually happens. You're always trying to stay ahead of that. Yeah. So a lot of that was overreaction. There was a lot of, Oh man, they're going to raise the rates so much. It's going to stop things. Who knows what's going to happen? Midterms around the corner. So it was something where we saw a pretty significant raise to rates, probably the biggest hike we've seen in that time frame in maybe 20 years. And you can see that on here. I mean, again, if it, if it was the end of March where things were really getting up there towards, towards 5%, Mm -hmm. then, uh, a lot of those houses that were under contract are going to close in April. Right. So they were still getting a little bit better rates then. That's why you don't really see the housing change until uh, usually a month to two months later, right? About two months. So a lot of times you lock your interest rates 30 days before you close. So you're, you've got a window to avoid the rates going up and people were starting to kind of jump on that a little bit because they knew rates were rising. Yeah. But then you start having the wait and see, well, if rates are, I'm going to wait till rates go back to three. And we're all saying, what force in the economy is going to cause it to go back down that low when everything that led up to it drove it artificially low? Right. All those artificial reasons were starting to leave the market. Yeah. And that's why you started seeing rates go back to what really is normal. This is more what Absolutely. a normal market is. Absolutely. I mean, so then we get to the point, rates have gone up in May, and now we start getting to the point where we're going to see a lot more listings and a lot fewer sales. Mm. So let, let's check out those numbers. So uh, you said we're about th- uh, 3.9 at the start of March yep. and then almost up to five by the end of March. Yep. Where were we say throughout May? So May stayed about 5%. Okay. Um, 5.4, five and a quarter. I'm kind of just scanning yeah. through my chart here. Yeah. Almost the whole month was about five to five and a quarter for okay. most of May. So but then we, we ha- saw the biggest jump of the year was end of May through June. Okay. That's where we went from five that's to six. To so six that's another yeah. full point increase. So, so that, really we're 3.3 funny. to start the year by June. We're six. We've, you know, almost doubled the interest rate just in those six months. Well, and then after after july or so it's mm-hmm. been a little bit more steady in terms of it has been extreme jumps yep so which is also the same for the real estate market because if you look on on most of these numbers it's going two months ahead mm. and so if if you look at june june is when we had that biggest that biggest jump well mm-hmm. we jumped up a lot more in july in terms of listings and and solds and then um because of the jump we had in march it wasn't until pretty much may that we started seeing that jump so in june If we go straight over to June, in June, suddenly we have 1,153 active listings compared to 446 sold, okay? So just compare that to April. April, we had 656 after, or I'm sorry, 682 active listings. And then right away in June, we have 1,153. So not quite doubled, but a lot more listings in a two month span. And, and the interesting thing, as I'm hearing you read the numbers, they're always about four to 500. Some of is the number of sold. So the number yeah. of holds sales didn't Pretty really close. change, it, but the number of listings did go up. Yeah. So, I mean, sold in April was 483 sold in, in June was 446. So not a mm-hmm. huge difference there. Um, but just more selection, more homes to choose correct. from than before. Okay. And like you said, June was that big drop. Yeah. And that's when we saw our big drop in sales. So yeah. for, in June we had 446, which had dropped about 40 from uh, from the previous couple of months. But then July we only had 352. Yeah. So July and was a big interesting. Drop. Like you said, it kind of echoes it. So June they went kind of up to six, started to level off. We got yep. down to a low point on August 2nd. Then from that point it went all the way up, all the way through almost yeah. to October, but was more steady. It was yeah. more. It wasn't these kind of crazy little spikes. And it, now and the high point this year. Uh, hit in November. That was the highest point we've seen this year. But since then, we're coming off the highest point we've seen. And see, that that's a good point because we got at, at our worst point, which is essentially towards the end of October in terms of mm. our, uh, our, our biggest gap. Um, October, we had 1,715 
active listings. So 107, uh, 1,715 active listings compared to 553 at the start of the year. Yeah. Right. Hmm. So that's, that's tripled more than tripled. Right. And then sold, we had 309. So 309 in October compared to 391 in January. Hmm. So not, I mean, still not an insane amount difference. Well, and you look at it and you say, okay, there's still only 1,700 homes. That's all. That's every home. That's it. Yep. In the whole county on a population the size we are, that's still not enough inventory. Yep. Now, the scary part for everybody is going from 500 to 17, but 500 is is crisis low. That's yeah. way too few homes, especially when you're selling 400 of them. I mean, so that that's what that's what we're trying to say. The market want you know stats and news and this type of stuff is trying to sensationalize. Oh, triple the amount of listings. Oh, yeah. that sounds bad. No, that sounds like okay. We're getting back to normal. That's a good thing. It's a good it thing. is. And and the good news is that <laughs> when you look at October now, all of a sudden uh, the charts been going out away from each other, and now it's starting to kind of come back come yeah. back in. So now October both the listings, active listings since October have come down. Mm -hmm. So there's now already becoming fewer listings and the number of solds are going up. So we're starting to come back together, which is what we've been projecting for a while here, especially as interest rates start to just cool down. Yeah. We just need them to level off. You never want to see anything really spike. That's what causes fear, whether it's a correct, you know, whether it's needed or not, any kind of major spikes, the news, the, the people, the the tone just changes. Right. Whenever you right. see a spike, whether it's up or down, you know, crisis falling, crisis rising. I mean, there's a crisis it, it in is. everything that changes. So that's what, like I said, the highest rate I've seen here looks like about October 24th was about 7.3%. Yeah. When we were at 3.3 to start the year, but now we're down into the six and now we're almost a point lower than the worst of the year yeah. and a year of just rates just pretty much climbing the whole time. There were some low points, of course, in any market, but I think that's where you're hearing some news. Okay, inventory supply is starting to maybe balance out. Rates mm-hmm. are starting to balance out. The holidays are kind of over. I think we're going to see a little bit of an increase that first quarter yeah. because things are leveling off and there's just more choices. People got scared off because they couldn't get an offer in because there's too many they're competing with or they really had to way overpay for a house to move to an area. Right. Now they at least have a little more selection to choose from. And, and the other good thing that we can already see is leveling off is the average days on market because mm-hmm. that's something that is a very big deal when you're looking at how long is, how, how easy is it going to be for me to sell my house? And this is changing also because people are starting to be a little bit more reasonable with the price of their home. Mm-hmm. So it's a pretty significant jump in uh, June, which is when we really started to see that change. June, so May to June, we were right at about 20 days per, uh, on the market, okay? Now, at, at the end of October, we're at 41.3. Hmm. So the good news is that now, all of a sudden, November, December, we've already begun to come down from October. So just like the average, uh, the active listings and the amount sold, we're starting to come back back to earth. So we went all the way up. We, we added an extra 20 days on average just from June until October. Mm. So that's a significant amount. You're doubling the time on market. And, and realistically, it's much more than that because the average of the houses are, I mean, it's going to even out to some really easy sales, others that are really difficult. So, and like, But that's more normal. Again, these are getting, yeah. these numbers we're at now is really much more of a normal, healthy market, not yeah. 10 days on market, 20 days. That is... Thir- 30 to 40 days, I'm totally fine with. That's nor- yeah. That's really what it should be yeah. for the most part. It yeah. should be. So, so that's, that's the good news is that it looks like things are already starting to come back to earth a little bit. Now there's so many things that could change that still. So our next video is going to be, what do we expect to happen in 2023? Yeah. Now I will tell you that there's not many people who would have sat here January of 2022 and told you exactly what was going to happen in 2023. Yeah. It was a weird year or in yeah. 2022 for us, it was a weird year, but, um, our next video, we'll kind of discuss what we think this might look like when we do the same video next year, what happened in 2023. So, um, so stay tuned for that. Otherwise let us know maybe your experiences in the real estate world over these past 12 months, because it's been a little bit wild for everybody. Some people got really lucky if they bought right before the interest rates went up kind of at the very beginning of the year or end of 2021 even. Um, and then some people have been just struggling waiting for them to come down. So again, our next video we'll talk about, should you be waiting for them to come down or is uh is maybe now the best time for you to buy for the next significant amount of time so we'll talk about all that here in our next upcoming video great appreciate everybody watching click and subscribe like and comment happy new year happy new year